Mm. All right, guys, welcome back to my vacation. But we've got another top 10 video for you, for you today, and we've changed up a bit from the Premier League one. We're going top 10 youngsters around the world, I guess. So we narrowed it down to non established players as well. So there won't be any Mbappe, no Sanjo. There will be a couple of ones that maybe you might think they're established, maybe not, but this is, these are the players you've gone with. So obviously the top 10, but there are 16 players altogether, or 17. So we'll start for number 10 anyway. There are actually two players tied for this. First one is Reese James. So tie up Lily Brim in your list and Tommy Brim in yours. Mm -hmm. Jack, he was originally in yours, but then you had to just take him out. But how, how good has the right back been for you guys since he's come in? Um, I'd say since he's come in, um, probably, yeah, definitely our best right back. I'd say this season and so far, he's um, been one of our best players, let alone defenders. Um, like, he looks like he can just do it all, like, to be honest. Like, he can defend, he can attack, you know, like, I'm not saying he's better than Trent, because obviously he's not, but. Um, Obviously, a lot of people talk about Trent defensively, whereas with Reese, you can see how um, how he can defend and how he's improved since last year defensively. Um, and then even going forward, he can cross a ball. But like, if we had players that um, could finish consistently, then he could have more assists than he already does. I think he's got two or three this season already. And obviously, you saw that he can shoot as well like his goal against um I think it was Brighton so I think yeah. he's, he's got everything to be one of the best right backs in the world but obviously just gotta hope he doesn't get injured yeah and the other so James got four points from our total another player was Jar Felix I was actually the only person who put him on my list and I put him at number probably number seven so he got four points as well I obviously I guess you could say it's a bit unfair on him because he didn't choose his price tag, but for over 100 mil, I guess you expect someone to have a bit more impact if he's here. I thought he's at. He's done one of the last few games, but last season it was a bit slow. I guess whether he as well doesn't help him out too much going forward. So, but I still feel like the quality is still there for him. It's just now getting on a consistent basis, but I feel like he done enough as well just to get into my top 10. So that's so they both came in at number 10, both tied. Number five, another player actually, I only I put in, there was Ricky Puig. So I put him in at number six on my list. Because for me, at the end of last season, Barcelona, like, was obviously, obviously messy there, but it revolved around him a lot. When Griezmann was out on the, out on the left or as far as up front, it was too slow. But when he was playing there in the middle, say over Vidal or over Busquets, one of these guys, or it was so much quicker, the play was so much better. I mean, Tom, you talked about a bit there, but he's on your list. What made him... What did you say? I think you said... Um, I think you said... You know, Amy? Yeah, yeah. All right, so I just say, what made him not make your top ten? Um, yeah, I've I've seen bits of him because we were linked with him a couple of years ago. Um, probably because I ain't seen enough of him, and he ain't been in the team enough, especially this year. I thought he would get a chance, but he seems to be a second fiddle to Pedri or something like that. I think Pedri's ahead of him. I haven't actually seen Pedri, so he didn't make either. But I like Puig because even though he's so small, he's so smooth with the ball. Um, I wouldn't say strength is an issue either. I like his passing very good. He he was um when they said he was the next Iniesta, like he, he's very similar to how he plays. I do like him. It's just the fact that I haven't seen enough of him, and he doesn't get enough game time to showcase his skill set but I'm sure he'll get a good move soon for him to do so yeah I was surprised when Kerman came out and said he wasn't going to play things a bold move from him but so he was number nine 
number eight now, we have, uh, I think, Eduard Camavinga. Plays for Stad Rene, obviously very young, made his front debut. On my list. I think so. Well, Tom, did you put him on yours? Yeah, I put him like... Oh my All right, then, Ty, you were third on your list. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he wasn't Ty's list. He was on Tom and Jack's list. He didn't make mine out. either. Yeah, Tom, you put him at number three. What made you, yeah. what made you put him at high? <laughs> I like him so much, Ooh, honestly. We talk about, like, Can't A being good. He could be better than Can't A. And that's saying something, because Can't A is ridiculous. But the one thing he's got over Can't A, he's a holding, like, a holding sort of midfielder, but he's got such good attacking play. I mean, I remember yeah. watching him last year. I, I heard a few bits about him last year. And so I thought I'd, wa- I'd watch him because it was a game against PSG. And he absolutely, like, classed out the PSG midfield. I think he even might have scored in that game as well. But he, he's so good and everyone's noticing it because he's like, what, 17 and he's already got a senior cap for France, I believe. Um, I feel like, and, he, and he scored over head kick for France. I mean, I know that's not a part of his game, but he's so good on the ball technically and at, at such a young age for him to have that confidence... And that ability, I'm just thinking, like, w- wait until he's, like, at a bigger club because he's going to get it. I wouldn't be surprised if, he get, if someone cashes in on him next year because the longer you wait, the longer, the more money he's going to cost and the more competition. So I could I could easily see Real Madrid going in for him, like, next year. I'm not mm. even joking. I would love – I mean, we've been linked with him. I cannot see that happening. But if that ever did happen, I'd be gassed because – he is honestly the next big thing. He, he's so good. That's why he was so high up on my list. I rate I'd him so him. much. Yeah. I'd love him to replace Kante when, yeah. when Kante is finished. Yeah. Right. Jack, like every other player in the world, he has been linked with Man United. You put him number six in your list. What, what, what quality stands out for him to put him? I mean, I've, I'm looking at your list and there's a couple of players below him, which I'm surprised by. So. What made you put him at number six in the table? Well, I think Tom's basically hit the nail on the head there. He's mentioned that he's a bit similar to Kante, but he's literally got that... I'm not saying Kante doesn't have this in him, but he's got that eye for a pass, you know? You Sometimes you see Kante playing his bit. doesn't suit him doing like the passing, but when you watch mm-hmm. Kamavinga, you just go, yeah, he, he's a ball player player, even though he's a centre defensive midfielder, like a, like a holding midfielder. So... Yeah, and I know, Joe, you said you might see some players under him that you thought might be higher, but I I want him to replace Pogba when he goes. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do that quite soon? So, coming at number eight on our list. Next was someone who put around the same position. Well, I put my number eight. All of you guys put my number seven, I believe. It's Gio Reyna, young American and Dortmund. Really took, came onto the team last season, played a bit for Dortmund's youth team in Champions League and really caught the eye of Lucien Favre, gone to the main team. Him and Haaland have been linking up really well. Um, we talked about a bit while we are discussing the players, how American have a decent attack lining up. Tom, how important could Reina be to them in, like, say, the next World Cup or next two tournaments for him? Uh, he, he could be so vital because... That I I can't remember the last time they had an like that creative player in midfield. Maybe Clint Dempsey. Um, yeah, Reina. I I heard about him a lot, and then um, I didn't watch the game, but it, I saw this uh video on Twitter ages ago, and it was that goal he scored. I think against Wolfsburg, dribbled it past mm-hmm. like uh, three three midfielders, and then outside the box just curled it with such pure and class te- of technique and it's gone top bins like he's technically so gifted and he's, he's so good dribbling is brilliant and now he's been rewarded because I'm pretty sure he plays every game now for um Dortmund so it's looking up for him and he's only what 17 18 he's just yeah. like Tamavingo in my opinion he's like for him to have such ability and confidence and like, Dortmund ain't no easy team to get into and, like, say, right, this is my position. 
I'm having it. Like they've got, especially when you're an attacking player, because Dortmund's got some good attacking threats. Especially now, um, Royce is back in. But even though Royce is back in, he still kept his place. I mean, Royce is in there as well. But when they've dropped like players like Hazard, Forgan Hazard over him, and Julian Brandt, who are good, um, they're older players, but they've still got a lot of potential. But even yeah. though he's younger, it don't really matter. His technical ability and his confidence is just so good that you just can't ignore it. I think he's good. I think he's vital, and that that American team is starting to build up. And he, he, I'd say he's probably America's best talent right now, in my opinion. Not sure I agree, but yeah, I mean, you said he's not he's starting for Bayern now, and. De- and not by for Dortmund now, and Dortmund's biggest game is going to buy him. He's starting the last game against him on around the left hand side. Yeah. For me, like I remember that first day against PSG. Give me one second, boys. My laptop is about to die. Find talent. What do you mean by talent? So, right, it's, it's you know. So, what do you mean? It's because potential. You can. You think he's got bigger potential than Pulisic. Yeah, I do. At 17, Pulisic is doing the same thing, technically. I mean, yeah, but Pulisic hasn't done that great until like last year he kicked on. Yeah, that's true. true. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried about him, actually. I feel like Rayner's potential is one of the highest I've ever seen from an American player in so long, other than Pulisic. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, it was a PSG game when they played at Dortmund last year where he came yeah, on and got had a real assist. impact. Yeah. yeah, he got the assist for Holland the goal as well. And with Dortmund having such a young team as well, they could almost progress together. So, not just for America, but for Dortmund as well, it could be a very good talent. And then, number six, um, another English player we put in there is Phil Foden. Jack, you actually put him in the highest, number four. Probably pains you as a United fan as well, but... Or do you think he's England's best talent? <laughs> well, he clearly is if you put him the highest. No, uh, I've lost a lot. He's, I still put Greenwood above him. Oh. Did I put Foden above Greenwood? Um, yeah. Greenwood. One above. Sound good. Yeah, I can't. I mean, he's definitely one of them. I mean, England have some very good, like not on the level of Foden, but they do have some very good youngsters. And I just think Foden and Greenwood are on like, are just above everyone else. I think they're on like about the same level. But yeah, they're definitely one of the two. Well, he's our top two talents of that age group in England for, for English football. Yeah, I mean... Tom, you put him, you put him one above Greenwood. What makes him just a little bit better for you? Um, I feel like he offers something different to what England's got. I like Greenwood a lot. The thing is that I reckon Greenwood. I can't say. See, the thing is with Greenwood, I I I don't know his position yet. A lot of people say he's a striker. I need to see him in striker first. Because a lot of main United fans do say he's a striker. So if I do see him in, as striker in a couple of years, he could go above Foden. But for now, where I see Foden in that attacking midfield, I think he's so good. He's so hard to get off the ball. He's so intelligent. Like I said before in another um, episode, he was above Jaden Sancho in like in development. But obviously, Sancho's gone forward because he he's, he got the move, uh, which was a smart career choice. Mm. Whether Foden has to do that, I don't know. He is going to get more opportunities this year, but it's hard being that Man City and not getting a chance. But if it if there is one person that is young to get that chance, it is him. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, I just I think he offers something different that England hasn't had for a long time. Uh, as a creative midfielder, and I, I just think he's he's one of the best prospects out there, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. But that's ten to six. Then we get to top five now. 
Number five is Sandro Tonali. So last season he was at Brescia, now he's last season? Yeah, last season he was at Brescia, he was Mika Eastman, yeah. and now yeah, he's meant to the league as well, so he's doing well for them. So apart from Tom, we all put him at number five, coming from a number eight. I mean, he's got what's the praise from one of the best Italian midfielders of all time in Andrea Pirlo saying, uh, Pirlo said, don't compare him to me because he's far better than I was. I mean, we consider him a defensive midfielder, but he can pick out a pass. He can attack very well. I mean, Ty, how do you rate Tonali? I mean, you put him at number five, but what makes um, him that high on your list? Like, for his age, he's like the perfect box-to-box midfielder. Like, like you said, he can do he can do both things to a high standard. So I, I think, to be fair, I don't think he'll be at AC Milan that long. I think he'll go there and then he'll smash it for a year or two and then maybe he'll go to Juventus or maybe he'll go to another country. But yeah, like you said, like he can do, he can just do everything. He can defend, he can attack. You know, I think he's a, I'm pretty sure from what I've seen, he's a very good leader as well. And for someone his age, it's, you know, vital to have something like that. Cause, um, Obviously, Italy, they haven't had, they've had like players like Baratti and stuff, but like they haven't had like great midfielders since, since guys like Pirlo and stuff like that. So hopefully he can kick on for, the, for their sake because at the moment their midfield isn't really saying much. So yeah, but I think he can be one of the best midfielders in the world if he keeps going at this rate. Yeah, and Tom, we've seen. I mean, they're top of the league right now, but East Milan over the last few seasons, it's fair to say, haven't been to mm. what we really expect them to be. They've dropped yeah. apart. Can Tonali help them reach that level again? As such, he's so young. You've got Don Naruma as well, another youngster in the league. He's a bit more established, like you said, so he's on the list. But can, how important is Tonali to almost bring them back to the top? Oh, he's very important. The problem, I think it's no doubt he will improve them and he will keep improving them because he ain't, and it will like keep improving him every year because he's gonna get better. The only problem is like the longevity of it, like how long he stays. To be honest, AC Milan ain't the club they used to be. Are they trying to get back to that um, stature? Which this is a good move for it because he helps a lot. Um, but I would not be surprised if someone like Juventus because they love getting players. If they Juventus love just getting Italian talent, and they were actually in for him. And they pulled out out of it this year for some reason. And then AC Milan got him instead. But, yeah, he's so good. Like, I'm surprised no one's actually mentioned about his um his set-piece quality. Like, yeah. his technique on the ball is ridiculous. And he's meant to be this holding midfielder. Like, his passing this year. And I'm pretty sure he scored, like, a very long-range free kick last year. That yeah. was, like, ridiculous. So... Yeah, I, I I think he... I don't know whether he'll be as... I think Perlo, that praise he gave him, was a good one, but I think he took it a bit far because Perlo was something else. But I reckon he could definitely hit that level. He's got the potential for it, but we'll just have to see how his development at AC Milan goes. But like Ty said, I, I could see him moving on to someone like Juventus. As I said, they love picking up the Italian talent. Yeah, they love him as well. Yeah, exactly. Could work very well under him. So tonight is number five. Number four is an interesting one. I had this guy number. He was my second, like second on my list. Ty, Tom, you guys had him at number four. But Jack, you had him at number eight, and it's Antti Vai. Which I'm surprised at, because I say he's number two on my list. Why, why is he so on yours? Is I did I did I like him, but I did my list mainly of the people that I know about, and I don't watch Barcelona yeah. too much, so I'm not gonna sit here pretend yeah he's brilliant. I don't know why I put him that low, but so my reasoning was I don't know much about him. I know I've seen him a few times, but I don't I don't yeah. watch Barcelona enough to know what he's good at, what he's not good at. So that's why he's low, but he is a good player. Yeah, I mean that's fair enough. You can judge on what you've seen. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's similar to Ricky Pui. Like, it was at the end of last season, the Barca just weren't playing well under uh, Sepia. And, like, when Fatty was playing with on the wing instead of someone like Griezmann, 
it was a completely different team and I feel like he's carried it on into this year. Unfortunately, he just got injured and be out for a few months, but he's breaking Champions League records for it, like age-wise, like scoring, scoring so many goals as well. Scoring El Clasico the other week as well. Uh, Tom, you put him at number four along with Ty. Barca are not struggling, but down one Champions League in a while and they lost out on La Liga last season as well. How quickly do you think Fatty can develop his talent so that he can almost have that Messi? I mean, obviously, he's going to be prepared to Messi as a Barcelona winger, but, but I guess, firstly, can he reach that Messi level? And secondly, how quickly can he, do you think he can develop as well? I'm going to say no with the Messi development because it's Messi. Um, <laughs> I don't think I would ever predict anyone to reach Messi like esque of how he's done. I mean, someone could do it, but I would never predict it because it's just way too rare. However, I feel like because... I feel like the situation of Barcelona suits Fatty so much because they're in this, like, restart phase. You need to develop. And then, so you look at all the players and he straight away catches everyone's eye because they got a lot of talent, uh, Barcelona, and I think he's well ahead of them. He's that. He's literally what they should do. What they done with Messi, like you build it around him when he was young. He got in. He's uh, re- he got in early when he was very young, and then they built it around him. I think that should be the guy you build your future around. And I, I could see him staying at Barcelona for years to come. Now, I reckon he'll be. I th- I like him a lot. He's not just worked his way through Barcelona. He's gotten into the Spanish team and the Spanish team hasn't been great over the years like, attacking wise and he's given them something different that they haven't had in a long time because attacking in, in Spain's attacking like side of the game it hasn't been great over the years it, it's, it's been decent defensively still but the attacking's just de- deteriorated ever since Xavi Iniesta Villa all, all them different players have just moved on from their careers and retired. I, I, that's why I had him so high on my list. I, he reminds me a lot of Messi, maybe not as good, but agility-wise, I, I, like, I like that sort of player. Um, the players that can go in and out of tight spaces. And like I said, he's so young. And at Barcelona, Barcelona ain't no easy team to... There's a lot of pressure going to Barcelona or being in Barcelona, but... He, he he got him fairly easy last year and he was playing Champions League games and he, he's so young and now it looks like that spot, even though he is injured, it might change now. But from the start of this season, that spot was his spot, it seems like, this year. So we'll just have to see. But I think he's he's got one of the bright sparks that fans can talk about in this negative period. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same as you. Like, it feels like he's already so mature in that position that he's playing. Like, it's almost like they can rely on him to do a job at such a young age, which you don't normally see, I guess, at Boston. And having Messi as a mentor, as a winger as well, I mean, can't, yeah. go, really, can't really go wrong with that. I also, a weird thing about Fatty is there's a Netflix, or, there's a documentary on Netflix, Boston Dream, and I think it came out in like 2015. And there was like one shot where they're showing loads of academy players, and loads of them. And one of the shots, I could see a, like an even younger Anti Fatty, which is crazy. Like it was filmed, what, five years ago now. And of all these players, he's, he was there, which is crazy. So a fair play to him. Hopefully he requires quickly. So into the top three now. I didn't expect this, but Tyrese, number three is Mason Greenwood. And I believe you put him highest on your list and number two. Interesting, Ooh. very interesting, in my opinion. So, what made him very nice as well? Ooh. Number um, two for you, why? Jack, how many goals did he score last season? Was it 20? All competitions? Yeah. Yeah, I think he did reach 20. Yeah, so this, exactly. So, 20 years old, he's what, 18? I mean, 20 goals, 18 years old. And, um, and he wasn't really starting games until after lockdown, really. And then and left foot, right foot. He does remind me a bit of um, Van Persie because of the way he plays and like the way he can come in 
on his left foot. He can use his right foot as well. Um, he just looks like the complete forward. And I think at times you can see that Man United have actually missed him this season when he hasn't been playing. Because like they've been playing guys like Dan James and you know players like that and Matar, who's not the same player he was a few years ago. So, like, and I think, obviously, like I said, scoring 20 goals when you're not starting every game, like, you won't see, like, even a lot of established strikers don't do that coming off the bench. So, I think he can go on to be England's best player and one of the best in the world because he's just got that natural ability as a striker. Yeah, Jack, obviously, you're probably buzzing that he's a United player now. We spoke about Bowden earlier. Scored his chap first Champions League goal against Leipzig, if I'm correct. Yes. Like I said, 18 years old. It was a similar thing to Rashford, I guess. Rashford was scoring every single debut he had. He's still so young. Now having two youngsters and almost Green can learn of Rashford as well. I mean, Rashford's doing such a great job on and off the pitch as a role model. And I since they're both so young as well, attacking wise, how like, in ten years where do you think? Greenwood, and I guess as a pair of Greenwood and Rashford could be. Well, let's hope they're still both at the club, <laughs> which I think they <laughs> both will be because they've gone through the academy and I just think they're the, those type of players that will just stay with the club they grew up with. Um, like I said, I think in 10 years he'll be one of the best in the world. You know, he's coming... A couple of years, he's ended up with, I don't know, Mbappe. A bit, I know he's younger than Mbappe, but like, they're going to be not too far away from each other, like age-wise, three, four years. So they're going to be around the same time. But I think his development carries on. I think he can reach that level. So like Ty said, he'll, in 10 years, he'll, he'll be up there, like one of the best players in the world. Yeah, I guess it's great as well, 10 years. It'll still be only be 20 years, so they thought sort of like... Manoring which is prime at that point yet, which is crazy to think. Yeah, uh, Tom, you put my number five in your list as a four players higher than him. What do you think is missing for him right now if, to put him high on your list? It's literally the uh, it's literally the fact that I'd love to see him as striker because that is his position. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but once he hits that strike position, I want to see what he's like. I think he's done a good job on the wing. But I want to see, I can't see him being a winger for England. Because when it's not my team, I like to think about the nation's team. So if he's English, I like to think about how he can be in the England team. Um, talk about like Shearer's record. Kane has got the best chance to be it. But if you put Greenwood up front, he, he probably gets a even better, definitely an even better chance of being it. I I just think he's got all the attributes to be a world class striker. I don't. I think he'd be way too wasted out on the wing. Someone who's got finishing like he does. I can't remember what game it was. I think it might have been Bournemouth in lockdown. He scored a bloody fantastic goal. He just hit it so hard, and there's nothing the goalkeeper could do. And it was actually such a tight angle, I believe. I think it was Bournemouth, but yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah I I I just want to see him in that striker position but obviously you got to think about like Man United right now they ain't really got a winger yet they need that Sancho or someone and they got Martial up front but if they get that Sancho or anyone in right wing to say right that's your position I think that's when Greenwood contests for the um, striker position definitely yeah fair enough so down to the top two now both Bundesliga players First one, number two, is Alfonso Davies. So I put my number four, Tom number two, Jack, no, yeah, Tom and Jack number two, and then Ty number three. And the only reason I put on number four is personally, I don't think he's a left back, I think he's a winger. And if I was picking the buying team, I actually wouldn't put him in my starting 11, which is going to be a bit weird because I think Lucas Hernandez is a better left back, and I think Leroy Sonny is a better winger. Which is why what? I wouldn't oh. put him there. That Can was surprising. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's just very interesting, just, Joel. No, no. You've never heard very that loud from anyone. I'd rather play Hernandez as a centre back. 
Where is he going now? Yeah, he is a centre back. Yeah, exactly. That's that's why it surprised me. Because Joel was well, talking not... about him playing, playing left back. He goes, hey, he's not a good know? left back. <sighs> yeah. You know, we can. Yeah. All right. So, how much did you, what did you hear what I said, Justin? We, hear, we heard everything until. Yeah, like, yeah, we heard everything. All right, yeah. So, yeah. Up. So, personally, I don't think he's the best defender that was shown in the Champions League final, in my opinion. And if you look at the game being up to that, he wasn't really tested, if you think about it. Going forward, he's amazing, which is why I think he's such a good winger and why he's number four on my list. But I wouldn't start him with Sane and I wouldn't start him with Lucas Hernandez as a defender, which is why he's at number four on my list. But, Tom, you put my number two in yours. Well, what makes him number two, well, second best? I think he's the best left-back in the world. At such a young age. I, I, Defensively I would, as well. Well, uh, that's the thing. Yeah, but you got to think about... you you got to think about that. The modern-day um, fullback is attacking. And you don't have yeah. to go attacking. But you can't really say anymore, but he's not good defensively because you could just say, well, look at Trent. He's the best right-back in the world and he can't fucking... He, he's shit defensively. Yeah, he's the best right-back in the world and he's shit defensively. Wamsak is one of the best um, tacklers in the world. Probably one of the best. Yeah, he is one of the best defensive fullbacks in the world. But you'd probably put him nowhere near the best fullback in the world at the moment. So I I just love um, the thing I like about Hosan <laughs> Davis is at such a young age, he's so so fast, but he's so aggressive with his attacking runs when you said you'd rather Lucas Hernandez who's a centre back I believe I was like nah mm. I'd, I'd rather him over Alaba in left back um, I think he's so good the only one I think is near yeah. him it's out of him and like Robertson um, I might be a little bit biased because I'm such a fan of Davis but he like what he was doing I think it's just because the age thing I think if he's yeah. He's doing this now. Look at what he's going to be doing in a couple more years when he hits his prime. You can't say he's hit his prime. Whereas Robertson, you could say, has hit his prime. He's in his prime. Whereas yeah. um, Alfonso Davis is up there with him and he hasn't hit his prime. He, he's just got into this Bayern team last year. So, yeah, I, th- I think he will be the best fullback in the world in a couple of years' time. Like, no doubt. Um, I, think, I think he's so good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Kyle, I guess my question for you is like I said, would you rather see him develop as a winger or as a fullback? Because obviously, he can play fullback because he has that amazing recovery pace, but would you prefer to see him on the wing? Um, I'd say, in, term, in terms of Bayern, I'd say as a fullback, because if you look at their winger, Son in um, Nabri, and even Coleman, I don't think like, he'd stand much of a chance of getting into the Bayern team on the wing. And obviously, like you said, his pace. And like Tom said, um, like the modern fullback these days doesn't, um, it's not all, It's not really about defending anymore. Like it's more about your attacking, which is why Trent is viewed as the best right back in the world. Um, but yeah, so I'd, yeah, I'd rather see him develop as a fullback, to be honest. Yeah. And Jack, obviously, you put him at number two as well. Yeah, I guess it is like problems. Like, obviously, like I say, he has a recovery piece to come back, but I feel like a defender still needs to defend if I understand what I'm trying to say. So, say, if, say you're in Davis' shoes, Jack, you want to be a winger. You, like at Montreal, yeah. Montreal, I think so. Yeah, he was a winger. Yeah. You have Sane in front of you, you have Coleman potentially as well. Ten years time, do you think you wanna? Do you think we'll still be at Bayern if he's forced to be a left back, or do you think he might make a move so he can play on the wing? I think I think he stays as a left back. Yeah. You know, I think although yeah, he wanted to be, he was a winger at Montreal, but go back. So was Wan Bissaka in his youth days at Crystal Palace, but then turned into a fullback. These things can happen. Um, yeah, I just think, like Tom said, he's 
one of, if not the best left back in the world. You know, you say he's not great defensively, but he's got that such quick turn of pace that even if he's in trouble, he can just quickly recover. You know, I've seen like when he's come in like the far post and it doesn't go to him, he's sprinting back 100 miles an hour and just get. No, I found me a number 10 is Erling Haaland. We all got my number 10 as well, I think. It's quite an easy choice for all of us. Um, number one. Jack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, number one, so no, number 10. Got 10 points in one of us. Um, Jack, you guys obviously linked with him in January. And we obviously didn't know how real his links were, but how good of a player really is he for 20 mil as well for Roman? Yeah, see, we 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 did, we wasn't sure about how much it was, but when we were talking about doing the players, we found out it was 20 mil. And I don't know how... Man United didn't get that deal over, man. I mean, he was good at Salzburg, but at Dortmund, he's been ripping up. First game off the bench and scores a hat trick, if I remember correctly. Yeah. That first game, you know, he's going to be here, I and mean, he hasn't stopped scoring since. He's so good. He's so powerful. He's got a brilliant finish. He's not slow at all. He's not obviously not the quickest, but he's not slow at all. He can run the channels. Good in the air. Good at hold up. He's he's a brilliant striker. He's still so young. Yeah. Tom, I saw someone on Twitter. Someone asked, "Would you take a sub deal to Kane for Haaland?" No. Not even like no. bearing in age wise. No. Why not? I'd rather just pay the money for him once Kane's finished. There's no way any Tottenham. Fans gonna say for us to swap Kane because we don't want Kane's career over yet. We want Kane to stay at Tottenham for the rest of his career until he's finished. Uh, and then once he's finished, then just go fucking pay what you want for him because that is like I, th- I think they're so identical. He's literally so much like Kane. He's got he's got the same sort of physique. Um, Similar attributes. Kane can well, Kane can do anything to be honest, and I think Harlan could probably definitely do that. I don't know what Harlan's passing's like, but um, for it, finishing wise, I, I like what I see so far because at that young age, he, he's so good, and his work rate actually is ridiculously good. He's a top five striker yeah. in the world. He gets goals probably. all the time. He's probably, there. yeah. He is. I think he is. Probably packed him up there. Yeah. Because yeah. he like, gets a score and it's what he does. Yeah. Um, the passing wise, I guess you don't really see him pass because he creates so many chances for himself anyway. Like, mm. He's got such a good shot. It's almost like Greenwood he could score at any angle, sort of thing. Like he trusts his left foot a lot. So, yes. Yeah, it's hard to think. That like almost like probably this time last year and really break through at Salzburg and make him the name for stuff in the Champions League, scoring all his goals and getting them into Dortmund. Uh, yeah, he's challenging Lewandowski as well, which is not an easy job for a golden boot. Lewandowski is unbelievable right now. So that is our top 10. So the players that didn't make it were Vinicius Jr., he only got three points, the only one person put him on the list, can't remember who it was. Might be mm-hmm. Ty, yeah. Ty. Yeah. Type of list. Uh, Kyle Saka, he was on Jack's list at number seven, no, eight. Um, Jude Bellingham also on Jack's list at number 10, didn't quite make it. Uh, Hudson Doyle on Ty's list at number 10. And then I had Martin at number 10. And Tom, you had Dominic. So, yeah. 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 I've watched him a couple of times at South like Champions League. I'm he impressed with like, this good. Yeah. I'm more than happy to sign him. I think his agent came out and said that we yeah. were interested in him. What What about him do you like the most from what you've seen so far? Because I haven't watched Champions League games with him. Yeah, he, he, he's um he's everywhere on the pitch. He's all that creator in midfield. Um, brilliant strike on him. He scored a lot of uh, long-range goals. Um, yeah, he, and I, I even watched him recently for... Um, uh, what's his nationality? Bulgaria, I believe. I think he's Bulgarian. Watched a couple of their games and he, he's assisting. 
he's one of them players that in the midfield he dictates everything and he gets goals and assists. He, he's he's vital to the um, Red Bull Salzburg team. So um, yeah, I could see him getting a move to the Prem or somewhere soon. We're linked with him. Arsenal is. I reckon a lot more teams will be because he he's a talent. Yeah, I don't see about getting a Hungarian. There's actually one in the queue. Yeah, yeah, Hungarian. I think he is Hungarian yeah. actually. Yeah. Well, that's our top ten list. We'll have another one for you soon. We'll see what it will be. But until then, have a nice. Before I think it's time to talk. I think it's time we sit down and just say what's going on. I think we should say.